laparoscopic anatomy of the groin uh, there are three ligaments that is important in the anatomical landmark number one is the median umbilical ligament number two is medial umbilical ligament and number three is lateral umbilical ligament okay so this is very important landmark based on that only you can tell the types of hernia okay let us first discuss about this median umbilical ligament okay if you see the abdomen from inside as in the laparoscopic view so in the midline you can able to see a, a ligament so this is called median umbilical ligament so what is this median umbilical ligament median umbilical ligament which is nothing but an obliterated uracus so which extends from the umbilicus to the fundus of the urinary bladder okay so next one is on the two sides you will be having two ligament this is this is called as medial umbilical ligament okay so this one is called as medial umbilical ligament which is again nothing but obliterated umbilical artery okay which is nothing but obliterated umbilical artery okay and again just lateral to that one you got an another ligament otherwise you can call it as a fold lateral umbilical ligament or fold which is a fold which is a nothing but a peritoneal fold okay so this is called a lateral so this fold it consists of inferior epigastric vessels okay so these three structures are very important uh, in identifying the types of inguinal hernia okay so the space between medial and lateral umbilical ligament this one is called as direct space okay direct space and space lateral to the lateral umbilical ligament this is called as indirect space okay indirect space okay from the direct space you are getting the hernia direct hernia from the indirect space you are getting indirect hernia okay so this is the basic thing about the ligaments that are involved in the laparoscopic anatomy of the groin okay now you can see that this is an intraoperative laparoscopic picture where you can able to see that this is a female patient where you can able to see this is a uterus is there and <clears throat> what you are seeing this is the so this structure is the obliterated umbilical artery which is medial umbilical ligament medial umbilical ligament and there also you can see the fold this one is the lateral umbilical fold or ligament where you can able to see the inferior epigastric vessels and on the this so the location the median will be present here median will be present here okay so so these are the landmarks first you have to identify when you are planning for the laparoscopic hernia surgery okay followed by these anatomical uh, terminology also you should know so number one is trapezoid of disaster number two triangle of doom number three is triangle of pain and number four is corona mortis so first we will discuss about what is this uh, triangle of uh, doom and triangle of pain okay so this laparoscopic anatomy or posterior anatomy where you will have these two triangles first triangle is triangle of doom the apex of the triangle is formed by deep inguinal ring the apex of the triangle is formed by deep inguinal ring and the medial medial boundary is formed by vas deferens and lateral boundary lateral boundary it is formed by it is formed by gonadal vessels okay and the below below it is formed by reflected part of the peritoneum okay and similarly just lateral to that you have an another triangle that is called as that is called as triangle of pain okay again the boundaries of triangle of pain medially it is gonadal vessels laterally it is by the reflected part of the peritoneum and above it is by the iliopubic tract iliopubic tract okay so what is the content of this triangle next question so the content of this triangle 
particular in triangle of doom the content is external external ilia vessels both artery as well as the vein whereas the content of the nerves the content of the triangle of pain are nerves there are four nerves will come across in this field number one it is a femoral nerve number one is a femoral nerve and number two is femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and number three is anterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh so four nerves are passing through this triangle femoral nerve femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve anterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh among these nerve the more common nerve that will be injured is the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh if it is injured it produces the loss of sensation uh, paresthesia in the lateral aspect of the thigh so this is called meralgia meralgia paresthetica paresthetica okay so this is called meralgia paresthetica okay so why it is called next question is why it is called triangle of two okay for after uh, doing the dissection in the laparoscopic region this uh, laparoscopic groin region okay so let us see this picture so this is the same space i am telling this is inferior pegastic vessels you are seeing this is inferior pegastic vessels and this one is the indirect space and this one is the direct space and you can see this is the vast difference this is the medial boundary of the medial boundary this is a medial boundary this is a lateral boundary by the gonadal vessel and you are raising the peritoneum from here okay just above the deep ring from that and up to the anterior spiliac spine you are just making an opening in the peritoneum you are creating a pre peritoneal pouch and you are reflecting you are bringing down the peritoneum so that lower part of the peritoneum that forms the lower boundary okay that is a peritoneal reflection okay so after doing this dissection this triangle of pain and triangle of doom okay uh, after that you are going to keep a mesh in the pre peritoneal space you can see the what you are seeing is the mesh so the mesh is kept so ideally the size of the mesh in this location usually it will be 15 cross minimum 15 cross 12 cm size of the mesh will be kept in this region and this mesh has to uh, fixed with stay plus you can see the stay plus or else an another device called a taker which is nothing but a metallic coil spring okay so if you fire this metallic coil spring uh, it will and hold the mesh in position okay so now we'll uh, now we'll go and discuss about triangle of the why the name came so you should not fire any tacker suppose if you fire any tacker in this location what will happen there will be a a bleeding in the external bleeding to the bleeding because of the external iliac vessel injury so there will be a torrential bleeding will be there it is very difficult to control the bleeding so that's why it's called triangle of doom similarly if you take the triangle of pain content all of them are four nerves are there so if you fire any uh, attacker in this location again chances to get the injure injuring the nerves are very more common and post operatively you will get a neurologic pain so that's why you should not fire any tacker in these two triangles okay all other regions so ideally uh, you will fire the tacker in the over the cooper's ligament or upper medial aspect or upper lateral aspect so this region so this region you should not use any tacker or stapler or sutures okay so that's why it's called triangle of doom and triangle of pain okay if you see these two triangle that is called as trapezoid of disaster okay these two triangle so first terminology trapezoid of disaster which is nothing but both triangle of doom and triangle of pain that is together it forms a trapezoid shape so you can watch if you can able to see that it forms a it forms a trapezoid shape so that is why uh, this is a component both a component it's together it's called trapezoid of disaster and the last one is corona mortis what is corona mortis so this is a picture again you've been able to see the trapezoid of disaster this intraoperative picture of laparoscopy where you can see this is the deep inguinal ring and you can able to see uh, 
this is the vast difference okay again i'm just marking vast difference this conodal vessels and you can see this is a heliopubic tract okay it forms a trapezoid of disaster okay so this is completely forming this trapezoid of disaster okay corona mortis corona mortis is nothing but on a vascular anastomosis between the uh, external iliac vessel as well as the internal iliac vessel so if you watch the carefully anatomy that a common iliac is there from the common iliac you are having two divisions are there one is external iliac another one is internal iliac so this is considered this is internal iliac this one is external iliac okay from the external iliac you got a artery that is a branch of external iliac artery that is inferior epigastric vessel inferior epigastric artery similarly similarly you will have another artery branches that is called obturator artery okay this is called obturator artery okay the anastomosis between there will be an anastomosis between obturator artery and inferior epigastric vessel so this location is called as corona mortis corona mortis so why it is called corona mortis so again the when you are doing uh, a laparoscopic uh, hernia surgery this anatomy is also very important the vascular sometimes aberrant uh, artery also will, uh, anastomotic uh, anomalies will be there so some aberrant artery will be there so you should be very careful while dealing with this location if again because it is directly two branches are coming from the two major vessel that is uh, internal iliac and external iliac vessel if there is an injury to these vessels then again there will be a torrential bleeding and you may lose the patient also that's otherwise called as crown of death so this is otherwise called as crown of death okay so this is also very significant in the laparoscopic anatomy okay corona mortis so you can able to see the vascular anastomosis between the two vessels this is the corona mortis okay so that's all about the laparoscopic anatomy of the groin region thank you